Hey everyone, I'm Austin with Copilot Bands. In this video, I'm going to give you guys a quick tour of this blue Sprinter van you see behind me. So this is a 2020 two-wheel drive gasoline Sprinter. It has the same four-cylinder turbo engine as the Mercedes Metris. And I've driven it around quite a bit and it feels very similar um, in throttle response and drivability as the uh, 3.5 EcoBoost Ford Transit. You can see on the front, I fabricated a brush guard for the front bumper, put some off-road lights there. We put a curved LED bar on the roof rack. On the back of the van here, you can see one of our ladders. We build these with 80-20 so that the ladder can be used as a rear carrier. You can put things like spare fuel or max tracks or bike rack on the back of this ladder, which makes it pretty versatile. Up top, you can see our WeBoost antenna, our skylight from Arctic Turn, 300 watts of solar and our max air vent fan. So we've installed a few Arctic turn windows in this van. These windows are super nice. They're insulated. They come with their own bug screen and blind. At the back of the van here, you can see our garage space, which is really similar to most of our other builds. We've got a large slider tray for mountain bikes or road bikes. We've got a huge storage drawer to organize all of your gear, both of which are on heavy duty drawer slides. Uh, we've got some outlets at the back here, an air compressor. Here you can see the water compartment. We've got our water inlet, water gauge, outdoor shower. Four gallon isotemp hot water heater, a uh, 20 gallon wheel well water tank from Titan Vans. Uh, you can see our cargo light. The rest of our plumbing, we got a water filter, places to stow the filters during the winter time, and our water pump. And over here we have our electrical system. It's all Battleborn and Victron components. We've got a little cubby here on the back side of the bed. Above the bed, you can see our vent fan, reading light. We've got this really big skylight roof hatch from Arctic Turn in the ceiling. White laminate on the cabinets and reclaimed wood on the ceiling. On the outside of the kitchen cabinet, you can see a nice drop down countertop. Here you can see our faucet with an integrated filtered water faucet all in one unit. Got a nice deep black composite sink, two burner cooktop. On the other side we have our control panel for a heater, battery monitor, inverter, pump switch, ceiling lights and a couple of outlets. We've got a flip up counter on the side here. Um, this particular client was able to source this beautiful reclaimed wood butcher block countertop which ties in really nicely with the reclaimed wood on the ceiling that has some cool imperfections in it that gives it some personality. Here you can see the fridge cabinet on heavy duty locking drawer slides. We put these plastic protective kick plates at the bottom of our cabinet drawers so that you can close these with your feet without damaging the laminate. Also they look pretty cool. So I forgot to shoot video of the second bed. In these photos you can see the cassette toilet drawer and the fridge drawer are used as supports for the bed slats. The drawers are on heavy duty drawer slides and the slats are held in place with a small aluminum clip. The electrical box in the rear is flush with the bench so the bed platform is extended into the garage area. Under the passenger seat we have our S-Bar petrol furnace. We use these Blum upstay hinges. Um, these are really great because they can be adjusted for the weight of the door and you can adjust how far they come up. We find that a lot of times the latch will touch the ceiling 
uh, depending on where a lot of gas struts are placed within the cabinet. So we typically use these, even though they're a little bit more expensive overall, but uh, the adjustability of where they land, where they fit inside the cabinet, you can adjust them up and down, left and right, and uh, makes for a really nice heavy duty hinge upstay for your upper cabinets. Here you can see the bed area. We put some quilted fabric inside the flares to make it feel a little cozier and to add a tiny bit of insulation. This guy's got some uh, USB outlets on each side. Upper cabinet here with a little shelf. A little nook here for a Bluetooth speaker. On the wall here we've got a couple of outlets. One of our turn windows. Got a blind, mug screen. Down on the floor here, you can see our flush mount shower pan. It's uh, aluminum and it drains right into the gray water tank. I TIG weld the drain pipe in and then I smooth it down so that the water drains into the gray water tank very easily with minimal cleanup. Here you can see our shower curtain just hangs from some snaps in the ceiling all the way to our shower pan and then we have these cool little magnetic weights that just snap on either side of the curtain to keep them in the pan got a slit with a large overlap on one side to keep the water in and then we have our shower nozzle which pulls right out goes into the shower, use it, or you can use it outside, which is pretty cool. So you have both of those options. And then the hose just stows nicely back inside this cabinet. You can see we've put some elastic and some button snaps to attach to the ceiling. That way when you're moving around inside the shower pan, it, uh, it flexes enough to keep the bottom in place and uh, we have our vent fan right above it so you can run that guy while you're showering to minimize any sort of moisture buildup inside the van. Once you let the shower curtain dry out you stuff it back in its little stuff sack it stows nicely and uh, yeah you can store that wherever you like. As always thanks for checking out this van video you can learn more about us at copilotvans.com or at copilotvans on Instagram.